Um, John asks, how is chat GPT going to be integrated into Microsoft 365? So of course there's uh, you know, we've all seen the announcements out with, with Bing and uh, even Satya Nadella, so CEO of, of Microsoft, has talked about how it's going to be integrated into all of the, you know, the office productivity tools. So you think about Word and PowerPoint and Excel and everything else. So uh, this is the big, big question. I know we're going to speculate a, a bit, but what are your thoughts on how this will be integrated? I'm. I'm using it today for some of my own personal productivity. For example, if I wanted to create a uh, a session abstract, I would have to write it. <clears throat> and I'm not very good at writing these things, admittedly. But I'll have a blog post, and I want to talk about it at a an, at a conference or an event. So I'm asking asking, excuse me, ChatGPT to make me a an engaging. Uh, session abstract based on my blog post and it gives me the starting point that I wouldn't ever be able to write myself without spending hours on end trying to write in that style that I'm not capable of so I take it I edit it and I make it mine with a personal touch and I can say things like rephrase this to be you know more interesting in simpler terms yeah or more interesting <laughs> whatever the case more interesting than the person who's going to actually techie, do the talk yeah. and uh yeah. So my hope is when I use something like uh, editor inside of Microsoft Word, I can just do that brain dump of information that is maybe not coherent, maybe not as eloquent as I would like it to be for whatever reason, and ask it to generate it in a way that is more consumable by users. Like we all think different ways. We all write in different ways. And that helps me be more productive it also helps some audiences uh be more included in the content that i'm trying to create i'm i guess i'm hinting at it. it's almost like an accessibility tool for some hmm. like I, I struggle to write it because maybe i have a a learning deficiency or I'm just a different way of thinking of things so i can get it out with help and i can optimize my time on it so that's my hope my my first thought was like the powerpoint the design tools and uh, you know one of the problems <laughs> with technical content and we've all been guilty of doing this where they're they're eye charts there's just too too much content on a single slide i can foresee this as taking that complex content on a slide and breaking it down into multiple slide suggestions or just on a single slide down to like three bullets um so taking paragraphs of information so it's you know conveying the or messaging as part of the presentation uh, and then moving the detailed content into the notes, for example. Um, I think that would be a fantastic tool or, um, or even then based on the content, making suggestions for uh, AI generated or licensed content out there that's gonna be the most relevant and give you different design options. Um, so I think that could be incredibly powerful. It's interesting when I hear both of you guys saying and and because I think of it from a search perspective mostly. Um, I think people really struggle with knowing how to phrase things and how to look for things. So by bringing in kind of that human communication element, it helps them. Yeah, that yeah, it, th that's an extension of the grammar capability that that the tools already have. Natural yeah. language processing, yeah. yeah, yeah, right. I think it really helps like define. Because sometimes I think we think things and we know what we want, but we're not entirely sure how to ask for it. So by asking mm -hmm. for it in, you know, with using natural language, then I think, you know, on the back end, it's able to find things easier. I'm not having to create Boolean phrases to find things. I'm simply writing a sentence. I want to know what such so and so did at such and such a thing. And can you give me information about it? It's a lot easier than you know, writing a this and this quote, quote, this and, you know, like, which is, you know, not how our brains think. Um, and so I think, you know, from an accessibility perspective, you know, I think it's great. I mean, I, I think it becomes accessibility to everybody, right? Is that it, as that's mm -hmm. extended into the world of us interacting with applications, 
Um, Because that's ultimately what's happening, right? We're interacting with applications, which for some reason has always been fairly easy for me. It's like I think in the way that the the search tool needs me to think, (laughs) whereas I don't think that's kind of the normal way that people think. And so I think when you think about interacting with these applications, and to Christian's point, I want something that's going to design something that's going to tell them how I feel about it. You know, it's hard to kind of, you know, put that into words. Well, if you can put it into words and then the application knows what you mean, now all of a sudden you're kind of like working together in a better way. I just think we're helping our future tech overlords understand us. (laughs) (laughs) Well, if you guys have you guys gotten to experience the new designer, uh, Microsoft designer. So I I got a license for that last week and I started playing with it. And so if you like put, you know, I want to make this. And then so like you can even get into the image. You know, like I want to, you know, have a fairy by a tree in the moonlight with a river like, you you know, it'll draw five renderings it'll give you five Mm -hmm. renderings of those images all together and i've been playing with it for the last couple of weeks and it's just so cool still i got a license for that i just (laughs) haven't used it yet hey hey if anybody wants a a, an invite i might have one or two so just let me know i'll I'll get it your way it is interesting stuff and it's it's an enabler if used right like it will help you get content out quicker Uh, so what i just saw was share and go yeah, the, the trench, trench, trench coat up. <laughs> <laughs> then, Norm, I mean, to your comment, my wife always tells me that I'm an enabler, but maybe that's a different thing. <laughs> yeah, it's a different angle. <laughs> I I asked Chat GBT to write a blog post for me. I, I didn't use it. I just wanted to see if it could do it. Yeah. It was like the first time I had used it, and it had, it had put out this really great blog post about how Power Automate and SharePoint work so well together, and had these scenarios and use cases, and I was like. This is really good. So I took it, put it into Word Online, because you have the the editor can do a, it can search the web for like content, and it found all of the different website articles and posts uh, that the, the 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 AI generated blog post was based on, and then Word Online created a bunch of references for it. So it was like this whole art coherent articulate article based on mm-hmm. things like learn.microsoft.com people's blog posts, third-party mm. apps. And I was like, that, you know, I think in that some ways some... it's just grabbing content and patching it in for you. But when you get it to rephrase your yeah. own content, it's very powerful. That's well, cool. That's, and, and that's where I think uh, in the EDU education sector, there's tools that that are being built to do like the plagiarism yeah. checks. Yeah. And mm-hmm. of course there's, there is metadata that's associated with anything cr- created by the AI as well. So there would be other kind of, you know, flags for, uh, you know, uh, admins for, for teachers to be able to go and check around those things. But to your point, I, like I was, as I was playing around with trying to find out, like I had pulled some text from an article and the article was uh, outdated. So this is in OneNote. So I was testing really old content of what I knew was a broken link. And it went and found the reference, the citation that was updated. Now, of course, I could have gone and searched and found that. But to be able to, if I've got that already within an article, for it to go and find similar content, for asking for what are sources, similar sources to the point that I'm making and find other references, you still need to go as the human factor and look at those, say, okay, this is truly what I want to cite within my work. But there are, there are ways to, you know, embellish or bolster your content and the mm-hmm. position that you're trying to take and more easily find, you know, similar voices and content out there so that you can properly cite those things. I mean, there's just a lot of great, and then I, so I've started using uh, where like to your point, Norm, where I, it's my content, but it's really rough. I'm like, I put it in the rough draft. I'm like, here's the, I get the idea. I, I, I call it like the, um, the the stream of consciousness blogging where i'm just getting the ideas out i'm not wordsmithing it i'm just trying to get what am i trying to say what do i want to cover here and i'm taking that and saying rephrase this and if you look at the paragraph sentence one awesome sentence two fantastic sentence three that doesn't really make any sense or it's duplicate whatever around that so it's still it's my content but i'm having it just add some 
improved grammar and structure and it gives me ideas to go and and things so somebody once defined it it's like it's not replacing the human interaction but it is speeding up it's unblocking you from the writing the creation process giving you other ideas based on your inputs to to create other things and so that's what i'm excited about and I, and I think we're going to see a lot more like that <clears throat> inside. And then there's the one other thing that, that I, I that was uh, through using, it wasn't chat GPT, but um, using uh, Jasper AI, I did the trial for the artwork creation. And so I do a bunch of standard posts, like I do my music posts every Saturday. And I went and created just a generic uh, you know, image and said, hey, create this image, and it generates three or four samples. So I do, I title all of my music posts, Blue Plate Special, so I have a picture of blue plates, and I want them to be different every time. And it generated a bunch of blue plate images, which I was able to go and use, that were original AI. I don't have to license them from another site. You know, I've used, gone through all the free unsplash.com so cool. images. So that kind of stuff is cool. The only thing I will say is that when you create with humans and the images, sometimes they can be kind of creepy. <laughs> <laughs> like they like they've got too many teeth. Um no they're, teeth they're, at all. You know, or just just hands That's with great, six fingers. That's a great that kind of stuff. Note to end on. Yeah.